Bonjour, in this video, we are going to look at the difference between tu and toi. Tu is a subject pronoun. Quite simply, it means that this pronoun indicates who's performing the action. And tu always comes before a verb. Knowing this information will save you. For example, you would say tu joues au foot. You play football. Tu is the subject of that sentence and joue is the verb. Therefore, tu has to come before the verb. Now, let's have a look at tonic stressed, also known as the emphatic pronoun toi, such as, you know, emphatic pronouns moi and elle and nous and vous and so on. Today, we are looking at toi only. And the reason being is because a lot of you make the difference or do not know how to make the difference between tu and toi, which both mean you. Now, a few facts about toi. Toi, as we know, is an emphatic or stressed pronoun. It is not a subject pronoun. Toi, therefore, is never found in front of a verb. You wouldn't say, like the example I've mentioned uh, before, tu joues au foot. We wouldn't say, toi joues au foot. No. Toi can be placed at the end of a sentence. Toi can be used after certain prepositions. And let's have a look at a few, such as chez, when we talk about a person place. So let's have a look at this example. Je viens chez. Toi, à 19h. And you know that? The emphatic comes after chez. I'm coming to yours at 7 p.m. Okay? Je viens chez toi. Of course, you could say je viens chez moi, but that's another emphatic pronoun. Okay? So, another uh, little words we're going to put these two together because they go well together is after the word avec ou sans. Okay, so avec, with, and sans, without. You would put the emphatic pronoun after that. For example, il est parti sans toi. Or, il est parti avec toi. Okay, you would not say tu here because tu is a subject pronoun. Okay, not an emphatic pronoun. So, he's left without you or is left with. Another little word where toi comes afterwards or any emphatic pronouns would be à. Ce livre est à toi. This book is yours or it is at you. Technically, that's how we translate it, but it means it's yours, okay? So, ce livre est à toi. Ce livre est à moi. Ce livre est à nous. But you will never say ce livre est à tu, okay? Because we said tu is a subject pronoun. Thank you. You're following. Well done, you. Pour. That's another little word. Ce livre est pour toi. Okay, this book is for you. Of course, we have other little words like that, and there is more in your support guide. Now, toi can be used to form an imperative tense of a reflexive verb. And there, I've I've lost you all. Listen. Se regarder. It means to look at yourself, okay? Now, how would you transform se regarder, which is a reflexive verb, you know, that's where the yourself comes from, into an imperative verb? An imperative, I want to say, look at yourself. You know, that's an imperative. That is a order, okay? Or look. That's an order, and it's called an imperative in French. Well, when you want to create the imperative of a reflexive verb in uh, French, you do it like that. If you wanted to say, look at yourself, as in an order, you would use the emphatic toi and not tu. Okay, so, regarde-toi. Okay, we wouldn't say regarde-tu. We would say regarde-toi, and I understand that regarde is a verb, but here, toi comes the verb and not before the verb. Tu regardes, you are looking, regarde-toi. Okay, look at 
yourself. So basically, we've transformed te, tu te regardes, you are looking at yourself, into toi in the imperative tense. Does that make sense to you? Now, toi emphasizes, I can't say that word, the identity of the person who is the star of the sentence. For example, you, you play football, right? So we would say, toi, tu joues au football, n'est-ce pas? Or we could say, tu joues au foot, toi, n'est-ce pas? Tu joues au foot, toi, n'est-ce pas? Okay, do you see what's happening? We have placed toi as the main character, okay? But it's still not before a verb. It is after or it emphasizes on that particular uh, tu. Okay, so we say toi, tu joues au football, n'est-ce pas? Or tu joues au football, toi, n'est-ce pas? And uh, we, we put a lot of moi and toi uh, in French, okay? J'ai rien fait, moi. I've done nothing, me. That happens a lot in French. And last but not least, we use toi after the conjunction a and never ever say tu after a because I hear it so many times. You know what I hear? This. Comment ça va? Bon, ça va. Et tu? Mm. Ooh, we wouldn't say and you like that. We would say a toi. Now, to go back to football. I don't like football, and you? Je n'aime pas le football, et toi? Can you see what's happening here? Now, knowing what we know, let's now try to fill out the following sentences. I'm going to click my fingers, and they are going to appear just like that. Ding! Okay, the exercise is quite simple. Do you see where the blanks are? I would like you to replace the blank by either tu, the subject pronoun, or toi, the emphatic pronoun. And I'm going to show you these sentences and give you like 10 seconds so we can work them out. You know, you've got four sentences, not hard. The first one is something mange tout le pain. Okay, what do you think here? Tu ou toi? That's right. Identify where the verb is. It's mange, okay? It is definitely tu because we know that tu comes before the verb. Well done. So, tu manges tout le pain. You are eating the whole of the bread. Okay, tu manges tout le pain. Let's have a look at number two. Je mange tout le pain. Et, okay, we know that. I know, I know you're shouting at the screen. I know that. You're saying, mais toi, toi. It is toi. Because I've literally just said that do not put to after it. Okay, so I am eating the whole bread and you, okay, je mange tout le pain. Et toi. Do you know when I've written that? I must have been hungry because there is a lot of bread thing going on here. Now, numéro trois, and we've got two gaps here. Reste chez aujourd'hui. That's easy, isn't it? Okay, identify the verb, reste. What do we put before the verb? Tu. So, tu restes chez toi aujourd'hui. Well done. Tu restes chez toi aujourd'hui. We've put both uh, pronouns here. And that's very clever, okay, because you can see their role really distinctively. Tu, the subject pronoun, and toi, because it comes after chez, the preposition, okay? Tu restes chez toi aujourd'hui? Oh, tu restes chez toi aujourd'hui. You're staying at home today, at yours, okay. And to finish, Abby. Yeah, well, it's an imperative, isn't it, of a reflexive verb. So it has to be toi, exactly. Habitois, that's an order. Get dressed. Habitois. So to summarize, remember that toi is never used before a verb and tu always comes before a verb, okay? Of course, there are more situations where you will be using toi and there are more examples on the support guide. Now, why don't you have a look at this video now? It's all about pronouns and their function. I think it's really subject pronoun and their functions. I think it's very important for you to, to, to know them by heart. That's it for me. Au revoir, à bientôt. Et puis, bah, bisous, bisous.